Well, obviously, Nate goes out there, seems to get you a quality start. How would you kind of assess his performance? I, I thought he was good, not great. I, I think the breaking stuff has been better, you know. Uh, they gave up a couple hits on breaking balls that I thought it, when he's throwing it good, they're not going to hit it as much. But I thought he was good. He competed. We got decent volume with his pitching wise. Got four innings out of him. He, you know, like I said, his fastball is really good. He really pissed off the fastball mainly tonight. Robbie, even Nate was consistently pounding the zone, two walks. But I mean, the bullpen zero walks in the game really competed. What did you see from those guys to? to kind of give you a chance there to make the comeback that you did. Yeah, Evan held it together there for a couple innings, and I thought we won the game with TD and, and Cam there at the end. I mean, that's you look up at the scoreboard, and we scored five in the last three, and, and they scored none in a really tight game with a really good team. They got some good hitters in that lineup. We've been talking about Cam, too, and the different arm slots. As a hitter, what does that do to you, basically not knowing what's coming right there? With well, the you, your eyes are all over the play. Like the – three hole I guess Thomason for them is a really good hitter and uh, you can just see him having to slow up you know their, their bat speeds change and um, um, you know but he you know he's just different it's funky you're not used to it you don't know what's coming um, and he's really a tough kid I, he ran out there tonight I'm always worried when a guy throws here for the first time and it didn't seem to phase him he was actually better than he's been in practice Steph you saw Bryce had the base ring area and obviously it was you know, pretty ticked off and comes back and gets the home run what do you think of the way he kind of flushed that and moved on He's, he's tough. He's probably the smallest four hole in the country we got hitting for us right now. But um, he's really in the money. He's really mad at himself. Like, I, really, I don't have to say much to him because he is such a smart player. He knew he had goofed that up. And, uh, but he had good at bats all night long. I was, I was really pleased with him. Benjamin? Uh, really, really nice debut for Dylan Cup there. Drawing three walks with some really nice defensive plays. What did you see out of him? Yeah, he was good. He, uh, you know, and I felt like he got more comfortable as the game went along. Um, those plays he made late in the game, I thought he made real aggressive and, and uh, a lot of confidence. Doug? Coach, you've talked about having you know, confidence in the offense to come from behind like you did today. How does that compare to when you're playing with the lead? Well, well playing with the lead's a lot easier. Our first five innings, I felt like we were swinging lead poles. You know, I mean, they, I mean, we finally pulled them up about the fifth, like, hey, dudes, relax a little bit. You're, you know, we're, Everybody was just pressing. It's opening day. You want to do a lot, and uh, they were able to relax. I think when DJ hit that ball, you know, everybody kind of relaxed a little bit. And then it's funny when after Bryce's swing, it's like everybody, you know, relaxed, and we had a lot better swings after that. Robbie, I know it's always tough in the game when somebody gets hurt to know, kind of know what's going on and all that. But do you have any idea on Logan yet? I don't. He's, uh, you know. We'll evaluate him. The doc came by. I haven't. I've come to y'all first, so I haven't even met with them. But he was in the dugout afterwards in good spirits. So hopefully, it's nothing too serious. How did you feel Nate did coming in there? Nate did morning? great. He hit the ball. You know, the really good ball in the, in the gap. Uh, took the ball in dirt. Made a nice play. Uh, Nate works hard. He has a ton of respect on this team. Very well liked kid and uh, great teammate. And works hard. And we say it all the time. You're, you never know when your opportunity is going to come. And his came real quick on opening day. See. Look at the box score too. I mean, I look at one time Nate's like 81% strike throwing today, and, and two walks. One of those intentional. So one real walk today. That, is that not the stat of the day for your team? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it's, uh, we haven't been walking a lot of them in our practices too much. So I haven't. You know, I haven't. It was just. Uh, but yeah, that's. It is a big one. Um, if you don't walk anybody and you you know make plays, we can play a little better defense than we played tonight. But I do think that's a big piece. Stefan, you talked in the past about you know guys getting their first experience to play here. I mean, for a guy like Cam in front of eleven thousand to get those last two innings, what do you see from him to kind of you know, give you that trust that he could handle an environment like that? You know, he has done it. You know, he won a national championship last year. He's the Cape. You know, he did it in the Cape Cod against all those great hitters, and he's just a really mature, tough kid, and just ran out there and. And uh, it's like he thrives in that. You know, he's made to play here. Is what I told him after the game. I just, I was really impressed with him. Chris, were you able to relax after that hit? There's, there's no relaxing. I mean, a little bit relaxing. And were you able to enjoy, I guess, the opening day win at all? And then how does it set the tone for the weekend? Yeah, I think you enjoy it now. During the middle of it, I mean, it was nice to get that lead in the eighth. You know, you're sitting there with their two big left-handed hitters coming to the park and coming to the plate. The wind's blowing out. There's just not a lot of relaxing in there, but um, it, was, it was nice the way we played late. It was almost like we needed a tough game. We needed it to, to test us a little bit, uh, and I think that'll help them be better tomorrow. Steve? A lot, a lot of social media critics these days, but you set a school record tonight. 
Uh, what can you say about this crowd, the fan support that this team had this evening? No, our fan base is the best. We say it every day. I mean, it's really a pretty special place. And, you know, I spent some time with the Air Force staff. I came out and watched their practice last night, and we talked for a long time. And I, I told them, you're going to play in front of the best college baseball fan base in the country. They're probably going to yell at you during the game. They'll feed you afterwards. Um, but our fans are like – knowledgeable they know baseball they know you know I think that's one of the biggest things that you get here not just a ton of people but people that really know the game and I think that's the neat piece but it's a uh, it was a lot of fun in front of everybody today Robbie the military appreciation piece of it too and you guys are wearing the hats and you got Air Force here and fly over I mean what's that mean for you um, and for your team to kind of show your appreciation to the military? Well, I thought it was huge. I mean, our, our athletic department has done an unbelievable job setting up everything this weekend. I mean, we've had, we got planes and paratroopers and all kind of stuff. I, I know they're probably looking out going, you know, I, I have a military background myself. I never come and talk to the other team. And last night I came out, I actually know their coach well, but I asked if I could talk to his team. I grew up in a my granddad was in the Air Force. My dad was in the Air Force. I was born at Keesler Air Force Base. I went to the Citadel. Um, I don't know if that's as military as these guys, but uh, I just spoke to him for a while, and we talked about how this is a military community, and a lot of a lot of my players have military families because we we do a great job for military families here. So I thought it was really cool. Cam, I know it's not junior college baseball, but 11,216 people pitching tonight, kind of hanging on your every pitch. What was that experience like to toe the rubber in front of a crowd like that? It was fun. I, I had a little bit of experience in Grand Junction doing it. We got to play in front of 11,000. Um, it's nice having 11,000 people rooting for you, you, though, instead of just people from the town. Bobby? Bryce had the big hit there, the big swing, and Coach talked about how mad you were the previous bat getting doubled up there. How'd that feel to get that, that big swing? I guess two years in a row you got one up in a day. But what'd, what'd that feel like to get your team in the lead? Uh, it was nice. Uh, I tried to, I'm trying to be better this year about flushing stuff that's happened before. Um, but I got ahead in the count, and uh, he hung a breaking ball for me. Um, lefty breaker we've been working on this week with Goat, getting ready for this game, and, uh, and it uh, just came to life there. So it was, it was fun. Um, I, knew, I knew when that happened, everybody could loosen up and play a little bit. We still had a little bit of the opening day jitters, but um, we, could, we could play cleaner, but uh, it was a good win to start the year off. Stefan? Bryce, uh, you know, playing in front of this, this crowd of 11,000 today, I guess how much did you learn, you know, in the, in the past and the experience of, of playing here to kind of get yourself prepared to play in an environment like that? Well, it's uh, just it's just one of those things where it never gets old. So you come out here, you still have all the adrenaline and everything. You have to kind of talk yourself down, uh, get back working to just stay short, uh, not try to do too much, trust the guy behind you, um, which is a uh, which is a big deal in our offense. I think our offense moved well, especially late, um, but we could be better uh, getting out in front earlier. Um, but I mean, I thought we did a great job today just uh, controlling it and finding a way to win. Oh, but Tanner, well, um, <laughs> kind of in a similar vein, Bryce, Coach Lamonis said that he thought you guys were swinging lead poles until you and DJ were able to kind of give, give the offense a shot in the arm. What does it kind of take from your end to be the kind of player that can be calm in that moment? Um, you just gotta you gotta find what works for you. Um, a big thing for me is just uh, reminding myself the work that not only I have put in, but the whole team has put in. And the way that we go about our practices and the work that we put in, we know that we're prepared. And knowing that you're prepared is half the battle. Doug, Cam, you pitched two innings today. I know you probably want to pitch every game, but what realistically, what's your way for the rest? Of the yeah, I'll be good whenever. I pitched five days in a row in the Cape one time, so I can pretty much do whatever. Steve. Kev, take me through the decision-making process of when you choose which arm slide, how much is Parker involved in all that, and is that just a feel thing for you? I guess maybe explain to me how you do what you do, when you do it, and why you do it. Yeah, so my dad actually taught me how to call pitches from a young age. I've been mixing arm slots for a while, so I kind of rely on that, and then you know, Parker's just learning me, and you know we're working together on it. Robbie, obviously you can't speak on last year. <laughs> you can only speak on, on what you've done so far, Coach Parker. But only two walks in this game. Bullpen had zero. What, what's the off-season work been like? Kind of working with him, the points of emphasis that he's had with the pitching staff. Yeah, super super diligent on cleaning up mechanics. Um, working a lot of glove side, arm side. Really just working command. 
because obviously you can't get guys out if you're not throwing strikes. So Parker's been a huge help with that, getting guys synced up and just moving well down the mound. Steph? You are talking a bit about camp, the, the arm slots and things like that. I mean, you said you started as a kid. Could you take us through kind of when you realized that's something you could do? I mean, obviously it's, it's not something you see a lot in the MLB or something as you're growing up. When did you realize that was something that you could do and kind of sustain as you built your career? Yeah, so my natural arm slots, the, the sidearm ones, I always threw like that. And then my parents told me like, hey, you can't throw like that going forward. So, you know, they put me in the doorway and had me throw up there. And uh, my dad said he used to drop down in high school. He would drop down sidearm a little bit and it was super effective. So I was like, oh, I might as well try it. Did that, worked on it, developed the curveball, And from there, I just kind of took off with it because I don't, I mean, I don't throw 95, so. Steve. Bryce, we talk about strike throwing all the time with the pitchers and catchers, but uh, you know, when you've got a pitcher out there that's throwing strikes and keeping you in the ball game, what does that mean for you guys defensively and offensively as far as maybe a reduction in pressure where you guys don't try to do too much? Yeah, I mean, it, it always feels awesome when you know you got a guy out there that's going to that's gonna fill, fill up the zone and uh, just be a dog out there that's going to throw strikes and just uh, compete on the mound. That's the big one is uh, knowing that our guys are going to run out there and compete is huge for us, and it, it, let, it takes a little bit of pressure off us. It lets us relax and do what we need to do on our side. Danny? Ross, you talked about trusting the guy behind you. That kind of keys will come back. Is that is that going to be the key, maybe, to when y'all do fall behind in games? Mm, definitely. Approach that mentality. Just uh, just passing the bat back and knowing that the guy behind you is the guy that can do it too. And so again, it takes some pressure off of you. Um, but I mean, there's not anybody in the lineup that I would not want to hit in a big spot. I got confidence in everybody one through nine right now, which is something that's special about our offense. Robbie. Bryce, just kind of touch on the, uh, the military aspect of the whole weekend. You guys are playing in military school, and you had all the, the guys, all the personnel out there today and the flyover. What's that mean to you for you guys to show that appreciation of back to the military? Yeah, it's really special, um, especially in a place like, like this that, w that they can get everything in and do a really good job of just showing our appreciation to them. And uh, we try to do our best to be respectful and uh, I know I have a lot of respect for those guys over there. And um, not only on the baseball side, but on other aspects as well. I mean, um, we have a lot of respect for them. We know how tough they are. And so um, it's just a great experience. I'm excited for tomorrow too, and uh, just the weekend going forward. Sammy? The fans I talked to today really want defense out of you guys this season. You showed a little bit of that today. and alluded to it a little bit, but what do you think this translates into foreshadowing for this weekend and the rest of the season, what fans can expect? Um, so, on uh, with Cup at short, Cup is a great natural defender and he works very hard uh, to just keep everything moving that way. He's very good at his, on his side. Um, and we've improved a lot, I think. I mean, DJ had a great play in right field today. Um, Kohler at third. Kohler had a great one at third. Um, and just, it, I mean, moving forward, we've been we've been great in practice and the way we go about things. And then even pregame, infield and outfield, we looked good today. I thought so, um, and that just kind of sets the tone for the weekend. So, hopefully, we're gonna keep doing with that forward. Cam, obviously, this was your first Division One game, but kind of interesting as a junior college guy that you did play in the Cape Cod League against a bunch of Division One guys, even some of your teammates here. I guess how did that kind of prepare you to come play here at the State? Oh, it prepared me a ton. I mean, just facing dudes who you know are going to get drafted, who are going to be. I mean, I've faced a couple guys that are already in the big leagues, and it's they put up tough at bats, so you have to you have to raise your own level, and then you learn how to compete at that level. And that's that's what we're doing here. That's what we're going to do in SEC play. That's what we're going to do all year. So it, it prepared me a ton.